Hello everyone, my name is Jonas Korla. I'm Chief Scientific Officer at Pacific Biosciences and um, uh, I would like to thank David Smith for inviting me to speak about the latest applications of PEC biosequencing for clinical research as part of the um, Virtual Genetics Week at LabWoods. Lab so my thanks to LabWoods um, organizers as well. Um, I should mention that PEC bio products are for researchers only and are not for use in diagnostic procedures. So all I'm, everything I'm going to talk about is for clinical research. Um, this is the agenda that, of the topic that I'd like to talk um, to you today about. Uh, I'd like to give a brief introduction to the SQL2 system and also HiFi reads in case you're not familiar. And then give examples, particularly in the area of full length phase gene sequencing. And, um, you know, realizing that the world is now very focused and for good reason, of course, to the COVID-19 pandemic, I thought what I'd like to try is to give these examples with a view of um, particular uh, types of assays that have relevance for understanding uh, the host immune response in particular and also a little bit of virus sequencing. So I was hoping to catch two birds with one stone by um, choosing these examples that you can then hopefully translate to your gene of interest but um, primarily now also highlighting the utility and the um, impact um, PEC bio uh, assays with high fi reads could have to studying the, uh, particularly the immune response and the genetic disposition to the COVID-19 uh, virus that we're all trying to uh, combat. So um, by way of introduction, um, the PEC bio technology, uh, long read sequencing that most of you I assume are uh, familiar with, over the last 10 years, um, we have um, improved with regard to the overall throughput and also read length. Um, the throughput has increased by over 10,000 folds uh, since 10 years ago and the read length by over 100 folds. And this has been accomplished both um, through new uh, software and sequencing chemistries, but also every five years or so um, through the use of new hardware. And the latest iteration of this is the SQL2 system that we launched pretty much about a year ago. Um, it generates more data because the smart cell 8M has 8 million uh, reaction wells compared to 1 million before. Uh, Hi-fi reads I will get into. These are accurate long reads. And the higher throughput um, uh, translates to uh, faster results, reduce project time, make it more affordable, and it supports a wide variety of applications. I'm just going to talk about targeted sequencing in the area of clinical research. So these Hi-fi reads then are um, a new type of data that uh, we, we're very excited about, and I hope um, I can share that with you and show you that our uh, the researchers are also excited about. And uh, they break the paradigm of what has been the world uh, until about a year ago, where you had uh, short and accurate reads on the one hand, and then long and noisy reads with lots of errors in um, the other with PecBio and Oxford Nanopore. And so we have um, now in, improve the chemistry sufficiently that we can get a very highly accurate reads that are still very long. And so this is shown uh, schematically here. You have a double-stranded piece of DNA on the upper left. Hairpin adapters are ligated. And then when the polymerase in smart sequencing uh, starts to make a copy uh, and we read the uh, sequence information while it's doing that, it will open up the structures into a rolling circle synthesis mode and you get these multiple subreads that you see on the right in yellow and purple. Uh, now those individually have um, errors and they're indicated by the red dots, but those are random. And so you take the consensus from those individual subreads as we call them, and you end up with what we call a hi-fi read um, that is uh, over 99% accurate. That's how we define it. And so that makes it really powerful to get both uh, the length and the accuracy, the best of both worlds, and I will try to uh, highlight how this can be leveraged for clinical research. Before I give those examples, I want to uh, highlight a few differences that um, the long and accurate reads allow compared to short read or Sanger sequencing. The first one is for amplicon sequencing with regard to the primer design. Uh, so on the left, you see that if your insert that you're interested in gets longer than, let's say, one kilobasis, um, you have to walk yourself through that uh, with multiple PCR reactions and overlaps and so forth. And it can become quite cumbersome. And in the case of short read sequencing, you then uh, sequence a lot and then you have to stitch it together. That's different on the right uh, with the PEC biopromer design because we have the long read length up to about 10 or even 15 kilobases. Basically, 
whatever long range PCR or amplicon you can make, we can sequence in one piece. Um, and uh, so this is a much easier design. You have one primer pair for target length up to 20 kb, and there's a, a greater primer design flexibility. If there's a region in the genome that doesn't give you a good primer, that's fine. Just go 500 bases upstream or maybe a kilobase upstream, doesn't matter, um, to make the PCR work. And uh, it's, it's much, a much a more simplified workflow and a simpler assay design. Similarly, for structure variation, uh, many of you are familiar that there's this M MLPA assay. And um, again, it can be cumbersome to develop these probes. Um, you need to test efficient probe hybridization, ligations. Their potential dropouts, um, and uh, it's uh, difficult to identify inversion events. Uh, with the PEC biotechnology, um, again, because we have the read length, um, you have one primer pair that covers and phases all of these structural variants and give that uh, within the same type of data, within the same uh, uh, high five reads data. And then lastly, on the assembly side of putting all the data back together, I mentioned that if you have to walk yourself through, let's say, a 6 kb region, it can be cumbersome because you have all these different reactions and uh, sequence reads that you have to stitch together. Uh, no assembly is required with the PEC biotechnology. You get one long read, whether it's 1 kb or 6 kb, that's the answer. And uh, there's no assembly and no downstream bioinformatics required. Now, lastly, with regard to multiplexing and barcoding, we have a number of different solutions depending on um, what particular target you have and uh, specifically how many samples you have uh, may um, uh, dictate what the best barcoding strategy is. But we provide, and let me start from the bottom right, uh, you can obviously put the barcodes into the primers and then they already are on the amplicons. For low sample numbers, you can use barcoded adapters that are on the hairpins and do that during the ligation. And then the two top approaches are for larger sample numbers we realized that a, a very popular choice, the M13 sequence, as a, um, a linker uh, between a two-step PCR protocol, where in the first PCR uh, you put on this linker, and then in the second you put on the barcodes in a universal uh, pooled PCR setting. Uh, we also have universal primers, or you can use your own, um, and it's a very uh, straightforward design. And this um, easily um, will allow you to barcode and pool over a thousand samples um, currently with the a standard setup. Uh, and then the software um, uh, will analyze that automatically. So we have a set of 384 barcodes that are optimized for smart sequencing. And then you can pool hundreds of targets and samples. Uh, they will all, because it's single molecule sequencing, uh, each reaction will give a single molecule read that has um, its own barcodes. And the software will demultiplex that and then analyze that in each barcode bucket separately and give you the answer. And even higher multiplexes is possible. Um, this is um, Paul Habert on the upper right, who has championed this and has written a very nice paper entitled A Sequel to Sanger, Amplicon Sequencing That Scales, uh, that I show on the left. Um, he's using asymmetric uh, barcoding and pooling on the SQL system, on the predecessor, up to 10,000 amplicons. And he finds that they're not only more accurate uh, compared to Sanger sequencing and the workflow that he was doing until then, but also vastly more cost effective, 40 fold less compared to Sanger sequencing and still an order of magnitude less compared to uh, next generation sequencing. He tested both Illumina and Ion Torrent. And that's because you don't have to stitch things together and have multiple PCR reactions and so forth. And so um, uh, here's a comparison of the workflow from the top that, um, uh, was given by the researchers at, uh, um, at Growth in Canada. On the left, you see their standard workflow where after the initial um, uh, amplification of the targets for these over 9,000 specimens, you have lots and lots of different plates in orange on the left where you have to clean up and then uh, pull it out to get on the Sanger sequencer. All of that is no longer necessary. After the initial round of PCR and putting the barcodes on, you pull it in the one tube. You make one library, you put it on the SQL system, and all those specimens will be sequenced simultaneously in just one uh, smart cell reaction. And so that was developed on the SQL system. Now they have um, already acquired a SQL 2 system. It's the first in Canada. And in the press release, you see on the bottom right there uh, with the oval, uh, green oval, um, uh, showed some data now pooling 36,000 different specimens 
and running those um, on one single smart cell. So you can get to extremely high sleep layer. So in summary, um, PEC bio sequencing, targeted uh, sequencing of PEC bio is um, efficient and quick and cost effective, um, both with regard to library prep, the actual sequencing and the data analysis. I won't go through those points um, uh, separately. Uh, there's also a link to a brochure that uh, you can look at uh, for more detail on the bottom here. So then um, in the uh, main portion of my talk, I'd like to give you examples um, where this um, paradigm has been leveraged. And as I mentioned, um, with a particular focus on uh, genes and uh, regions in the human genome that uh, have relevance uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, because they have uh, roles in the immune response. Uh, before I do that, I mean, in general, what we have seen is that with the HIFI reads, um, you can greatly improve the mappability of um, uh, the information. So this was um, on the upper right is a paper um, highlighting about 200 or so medically relevant genes that are um, were called the so-called NGS death zone. So they were uh, it was not possible to sequence them, uh, characterize them accurately, and with the HIFI reads, um, it's possible to get most of those and uh, detect, for example, 5% more variants in the so-called medical exome. Um, so, forth. so just one example hidden there in the list in the green there is GBA. Um, so GBA mutations therein cause uh, Gaucher disease. And uh, researchers from Mount Sinai, uh, Stuart Scott, uh, this was a talk given by uh, Bobby Sebra uh, already in 2016, uh, which is recorded. And you can get the link for the full recording down here. Uh, showing that you can uh, now access the full gene with smart sequencing and also characterize the, and resolve the pseudogene. So the difficulty around why this was previously in NGS death zone gene is because you have uh, a lot of polymorphism, but also this nearby pseudogene that has high homology. So the shorter reads don't tell you whether a particular mutation is on the gene or on the pseudogene. And of course, that matters um, with regard to the um, disease um, presentation and so forth. And so they developed an assay that Bobby also uh, described, um, sequencing an entire 6.4 KB piece of DNA that covers uh, the relevant mutations. You can identify the mutations. You can phase them into the two alleles. And um, so this um, was quite a while ago. Things take a while, especially with new technology. But uh, this was late last year, I believe, was uh, approved by um, the New York State Department of Health as a, um, as a clinical test. And so this is the, um, um, uh, this is the relevant um, approved site and highlighted there with uh, smart sequencing uh, is now an approved clinical test for um, looking at uh, GBA gene for comprehensive Gaucher disease testing. And uh, other... Um, Genes are of a uh, similar nature, and uh, they're these so-called hard sequence genes, and I've listed some of them down there. Um, this in particular for uh, reproductive uh, carrier screening. It is anticipated that long read sequencing and high fi reads will greatly improve the characterization of these genes, just like GBA, um, and ultimately increase and improve the diagnostic yields. And this is a fairly uh, large um, uh, segment in the market. Um, you can see that right now probably it's about a billion dollars and uh, worldwide and it's expected to grow to about three billion dollars in about 10 years time. And so um, we see great opportunities in these areas and um, just as a screenshot and you can um, pause the recording and look for your favorite gene, there are a number of clinically relevant uh, targets that are very exciting to us because we believe they can be um, sequence better uh, and more efficiently with smart sequencing. And um, if you want to know more about this, there are two excellent review papers that appeared last year uh, summarizing in the different areas, uh, cancer, reproduction, and so forth, neurobiology, how long read sequencing can um, help and is emerging in medical genetics. But now a few examples of relevance to COVID-19. The first one's HLA typing. Of course, the HLA uh, gene family uh, is one of the most important um, uh, genes in the immune response. And so typically, this has been done with short read sequencing with imputation, statistical imputation. And for a few years now, it's been well recognized that with PEC bio long reads, it's a lot easier to uh, segregate the alleles and to type HLA at high resolution. And that's because you can 
uh, generate long range amplicons that span the entire all the exons and you can phase the alleles um, and uh, it's a much simpler more efficient workflow uh, and uh, you have direct evidence of new alleles so no more imputation and so forth there's a very nice review article um, by um, Nima Mayer and Steve Marsh from Anthony Nolan Research Institute in the United Kingdom who have really pioneered um, using PEC biosequencing for high resolution HLA typing and this is a a great review article from a while back. I was excited to see a very recent study which came out just uh, uh, three weeks or so on uh, looking at the HLA-E gene and applying smart sequencing to uh, characterizing this particular HLA gene. Uh, that's not been studied as heavily as the others. And um, in the paper though, you can see down on the bottom, it is uh, has been known to be involved, for example, in viral responses and CD8, uh, T cell stimulation, and so forth. So uh, HLAE um, may play an important role in the immune system, particularly in terms of virus responses. And um, the HLAE gene has um, previously been assumed to have relatively low genetic diversity. Um, however, the researchers um, sequenced 212 different samples and found that uh, 15 variants were with frequency of less than 1% indicating that it is possible that um, there are many HLAE alleles with low frequencies in the population opposing the historical view of the HLAE diversity and suggest that we'll find more variation and it may have uh, effect on um, the immune response and the virus response. And then the last sentence is, uh, you can see, however, when reporting novel alleles, care should be taken of using short DNA sequencing technologies, advocating for smart sequencing to really do this uh, correctly. Um, there are service providers. Here's just one example, Nancy Serap on the right has been championing PecBio for um, HLA sequencing service and uh, uh, winning multi-year contracts to do this. Uh, this was in 2018 when he had already tested about a half a million samples. By now it's well over a million samples that have gone into high volume, high resolution HLA uh, typing lab that he's running and um, uh, really setting the new gold standard. And then in addition to histogenetics, I mentioned Anthony Nolan, LabCorp is also uh, a site where you can get HLA typing done with PicBio and I have some of the contact information if you're interested and have cohorts that you would like to subject to really knowing what the HLA types of those uh, samples are with uh, confidence. Uh, the second area is in the area of pharmacogenomics. Um, so the problem statement um, is very simple, that of course people have different uh, responses to different drugs and also the drug amounts. Uh, so the medicines that are being applied have to be carefully tailored to each individual patient. But that's difficult without knowing the genetic disposition. And so 3.5% uh, of hospital admissions are related to adverse drug reactions and it's actually in the US the fourth uh, leading cause of death, adverse drug reaction. Um, knowing about uh, the types of genes that are responsible for metabolizing those medicines uh, better is uh, very advantageous. Here's just one example. There are many others that are being now sequenced with PecBio. cyp 2 d 6 is a, uh, a classical gene that's metabolizing a large number of um, drugs, uh, Western medicine drugs, and in a series of papers by different groups, you can see from the titles, full-length sequencing of sub 2 d 6 uh, being flexible and scaling, allowing for new allele discoveries, and now getting into the clinical pharmacogenetic testing arena um, in this article on the lower right. And uh, lastly, I want to talk about the immune-related uh, sequencing. So uh, with particular, you know, this applies to any uh, challenge of the um, uh, human immune system, but with regard to uh, SARS-CoV-2, um, you know, how could high bias sequencing potentially help understand the host response? And so what we've seen there um, in general is that uh, full-length B cell repertoire sequencing uh, can be of utility uh, to find the, the broadly neutralizing antibodies in recovered patients and find out what they are, um, uh, differentiate effective from ineffective immune responses, and um, also for vaccine response testing. And then with regard to the uh, genotypic disposition, um, which obviously may influence the disease progression, sequencing the IGH locus in the genome, uh, which has been uh, very difficult. So I would like to give a couple examples of this uh, broad 
uh, application area. So with regard to B cell receptors, many of you will be familiar. So very briefly recap, um, you have this diversity through VDJ recombination that uh, creates the initial receptor diversity. You have sloppy splicing, which adds to BCR diversity. And then you have somatic hypermutation, which can introduce even more variants. And they can occur anywhere in the variable region, not just the CD3. And so on the right, you can see that if you're only sequencing the CD3, um, the CDR3, uh, the short reads, you're missing uh, important variants, um, and the PEC bio hi reads allow you to get the full resolution of both the variable and the constant region. So the short read approaches only capture variants within a section of what's relevant. Uh, hi fi reads can capture all the mutations that arise during somatic hypermutation, and they uh, capture the isotype information from single molecules. And the accuracy and consistency is very high because um, there's no assembly required. You get the full read, and that is the entire uh, information. You don't have to stitch together short pieces. So a, uh, I think a landmark pioneering paper in 2016 uh, was published um, that um, is called Artisan PCR, Rapid Identification of Full-Length Immunoglobulin Rearrangements Without Primer Finding Bias um, uh, by Kerning et al. Uh, really nicely demonstrating that you can now get um, these full-length um, regions um, and see those rearrangements. All VDJ alleles are amplified with equal efficiencies, and that's because the RT and the PCR uh, priming occur exclusively in the constant domain, so you don't have to do any amplifications in variable domains which uh, introduce bias. There's no assembly required, so it's very consistent, and um, uh, the accuracy is very high, including for longer rearrangements. And all the variants uh, are captured instead of only those in the CDR3 region. Uh, here is an example comparison. Uh, in black, uh, the new artisan PCR, um, and with regard to the homology, um, uh, and you can see that um, the multiplex RT PCR fails because you can have mismatches in primer binding sites, uh, lack of a primer for certain alleles or truncations of genes, and that. Uh, uh, um, a result in a bias. And uh, so um, the paper demonstrates that uh, this artisan PCR combined with the massively parallel long read sequencing technology with PacBio that covers the entire VDJ sequences in a single read that's uniquely provided by the PacBio platform permits an unbiased and comprehensive analysis of the BCR repertoires. This paper was applying it to cancer, but um, obviously it's straightforward to imagine applying that to viral infection and the immune response to viral infection, like uh, um, the uh, current pandemic causing virus, coronavirus. Uh, now then, uh, switching over to the genetic disposition, the IGH locus has been really difficult um, to resolve, and that's because it is uh, highly repetitive. And uh, Corey Watson and colleagues, Melissa Smith at uh, Mount Sinai, they have uh, pioneered smart sequencing to really resolve uh, these loci. So previously, um, uh, sequencing the IGH locus and genotyping it required back cloning and Sanger sequencing or relied on statistical inference from immune repertoire data. Um, and uh, so the researchers here uh, pioneered PECBIO specific, ethnic specific reference genomes that have fully assembled IGH loci, reveal all the structural variation of the IGH locus that you can see an example thereof uh, on the left. And uh, we understand that uh, Corey Watson and colleagues are now following up with a target capture method to sequence a large number of samples using high fat sequencing. The first work was done in the context of um, whole genome sequencing. And now getting this to a target capture method will make it um, very efficient and compatible with a large number of samples. Um, recently, um, Corey Watson uh, collaborated with others to um, generate this tool, immunotyper um, uh, calling tool, uh, genotyping and uh, performing copy number, and copy, number, copy number analysis of the immunoglobulin heavy chain variable genes uh, using the PEC bio reads. Um, and this is from the abstract. I've just highlighted that um, one of the remaining challenges um, in describing an individual's genetic variation is the IGH locus. And on the other hand, it's critical for the development of antibodies and the adaptive immune system. So for coronavirus responses, for example, 
Uh, the immunotyper calling tool is the first like, bio-based genotyping copy number calling tool specifically designed for these uh, IGHB genes, and it's, uh, this paper presents the most comprehensive uh, genotyping approach published to date. So check out this paper. And then also in model organisms, this is a preprint um, that uh, I understand has not been accepted for publication in the Journal of Immunology, so it should come out very shortly. Um, looking at uh, rhesus macaques, um, of course, the macaque is an important model organism for immune disease research, such as HIV, Zika, but now um, I would imagine also SARS-CoV-2 for, uh, for certain. Uh, but the immune repertoire database for macaque is incomplete and not the best quality. Um, so in this paper, um, this is an IsoSeq paper, full-length RNA-seq, uh, pooling different tissue types and uh, carrying out whole transcriptome IsoSeq. And in summary, um, the paper presents the first full-length complete reference set of all major Ig and TCR gene families in the macaque genome. Uh, it profiles um, the sequence diversity in the variable regions, reveals PCR amplification bias with the existing macaque primers, and designs the first VDJ primers for the rhesus macaque that uh, is then also applicable um, to follow up for single cell platforms, which is very exciting. So then closing the circle um, uh, and thinking about sequencing the virus, that's also just also amplicon-based sequencing because it's an RNA virus, and um, uh, the standard approaches are to make cDNA and then uh, to sequence these amplicons. We have uh, generated a website, a resource web page that you can see the link um, on the lower right, pecky.com forward slash COVID-19, um, looking at long insert amplification rather than uh, the 400 base um, short read insert. And the longer amplicons could be advantageous um, because um, they can be, uh, they can span a longer uh, stretch of the virus sequence. Um, it seems like at the moment the virus may be not uh, mutating uh, very much. However, it is certainly anticipated that that uh, can change once uh, it is challenged with uh, drugs, um, for example, and then uh, uh, drug resistance mutations um, would be selected for and so forth. And so um, there have been a number of long insert strategies that have already published from the CDC, Liverpool, Australia, Mount Sinai. We're also working on our own um, design to capture the virus in bigger chunks bigger pieces, and so check out the, uh, the website. And um, phasing mutations and looking at minor variants is certainly something that has been applied um, already quite extensively on other uh, viruses. Um, so here is just a few examples on HIV, um, uh, hepatitis B virus, and so forth. And the last one on the bottom you see is another coronavirus, human coronavirus NL63. Um, and uh, doing surveillance and looking at recombination history and so forth. So this is all things that you can very easily do with the uh, uh, hi read paradigm uh, and, and take it to the single cell level. So this is a really exciting uh, paper in the Journal of Virology looking at flu and um, uh, PecBio uh, single cell isoseq data um, yield both the full length influenza um, uh, virus sequence and the immune response transcripts. Um, and so uh, this allows you to give, get a comprehensive view of the mutational landscape in each cell and showing for the flu, for example, we know that there's extremely high mutation rates and recombination rates. And uh, this study is the first complete picture of how viral mutations affect the course of infections in single cells. So with that, I will close. And um, I hope I've given you an example for the, of the benefits of an, an, uh, an overview with examples of the benefits that smart sequencing can provide for amplicon sequencing, uh, simplified workflow, uh, cost-effective, reduced time to results on the SQL2 system, and the highest accuracy and resolution through the use of HIFI reads. For most amplicons, which are short, uh, the reads are essentially always perfect, greater than QB50, uh, also greatly simplifying the bioinformatic analysis. There's lots of um, uh, other information on our website, and uh, there's some of the links here. Um, that you can see uh, and get from the PDF that will be distributed from our website, both with regard to best practices, applications, procedures, and checklists, as well as posters and webinars on uh, related um, topics. So with that, I'll close. I would like to uh, thank David again for allowing me to speak in his um, uh, clinically focused uh, forum as part of the uh, Virtual Genetics uh, Week at LabRoots. 
I'll thank you for attending, um, and I understand that uh, you can uh, put questions in the um, question panel, and they, those will be emailed to me, and I'll be very happy to answer those and look forward to being in touch. And if you're interested in PEC biosequencing, please uh, visit our website. Thank you very much.